Hey, what's up guys? So we have a bit of a situation unfolding right now and I thought it was important enough that I interrupt my video schedule and make this video. So there has been a game developer who has come out on Reddit. Um, they've just launched their game. They spent thousands of dollars, four years making it with a small team. And this game has just crashed. It has had an abysmal launch and they put out a plea to the community asking for help, asking what went wrong. They're exasperated, they're in a state of shock, and I can completely understand that. So I wanted to take a look at the situation with you guys for the first time and try to get to the bottom of what happened so that it can perhaps help us and also help the developer to kind of get a clearer picture of what went wrong. So let's look at this, guys. So let me now read to you their post which appeared on the Game Dev subreddit. Hello, Game Devs. I come to you saddened and exasperated by my experience. I spent the better part of the last four years working on my first game with friends. We focused on making a quality game that people would love to play, and all our feedback from dozens of testers and streamers and internet friends that played said it was going to be amazing and they loved playing it. We spent amongst ourselves nearly $10,000 of our own money on assets, music, contractors, marketing and legal. While we are not marketing people, we certainly did not neglect marketing. We spent nearly $1,000 of our own money in ads, Facebook, and Instagram. We had all the social media accounts. We posted and engaged with the community. We had a Discord with over 100 people. We had 2,300 wish lists at launch. Yet, after being released for a full week, we've made $579 gross but only $335 net because of taxes and you know Steam fees. I can't even describe to you how much of a disappointment it is. And I would have ended up with more money buying games and just playing them versus the money spent on making one with how poorly it sold. Maybe my game is just a flop. I don't know. I feel like I've wasted the past four years of my life. I don't think I was completely irrational in my expectations. I didn't expect to be a millionaire, but I was confident we'd at least break even. Here are some of my questions for the community. Please be honest, even if it's harsh. I think we were surrounded by too many people pleasers and maybe didn't have an accurate representation of what was happening. 40% of the copies we sold were requested for a return and refund. Is this normal? While we're a multiplayer title, this seems to be high. We released with 2,300 wish lists. We read around 10 to 50% of those can convert. After a week, we've had about two conversions and now 2,400 wish lists. Is that low of a conversion common? The only reviews we have had are negative. Some are completely off-topic despite violating Steam's off-topic policy and being reported. They're still there. Others are just from negative people who only post negative reviews for all their games. It seems that quality of game does not matter. All that matters is marketing and if you're able to go viral with a big streamer of some meme or a publisher who knows how to market who takes tens of thousands or 50% cut. Help. That's been my experience so far. 10,000 in, $350 out. Okay, a lot to unpack there. So first of all, I want to say I really feel for these guys. I really do. You know, they spent uh, multiple years working on this and probably uh, compromised a lot of their personal life and their personal hobbies and pleasures so they can, they can do this together. Regardless of how their game sold, they should be very proud of what they accomplished. Not many people actually get to ship their game. And by the sounds of it, I'm yet to see the game properly, but um, by the sounds of it, they put in a lot of time and a lot of effort and took this very seriously. It's not one of these um, just, you know, crappy games and people are like, oh, what happened? You know, because they're in complete delusion. These people at least did make an active um, effort to tick all, as many boxes as they could. So anyways, I want to take a look at this and try to work out what the hell happened. So one of the very alarming things here is that they had uh, 2,300 wish lists and converted two sales. 
two sales of 2,300. So let me get my calculator out. I've heard of um, bad sales conversions, but 0.04 magnitudes less than 1%. Um, that doesn't seem right, first of all. Something has gone wrong here. Recently, I've seen an acute focus on wish lists where people are talking about wish lists, wishes, you've got to get your wish lists. And that is very true because uh, wish lists are an important data point, a useful metric that Steam provides us pre-launch because we don't have much to work with as game developers. Like, what do we have? How do we know if a game's going to do well or not? I mean, the wish lists are pretty much the main thing we can work with, but it's not the only factor. And what this shows is that you can have thousands of wish lists and it's it's junk. It means nothing if you don't get your other factors aligned. So I'm guessing that there were some other factors that influenced this low conversion where people wish listed the game pre-launch thinking, ah, oh, this looks good, right? And then something happened when the game launched. When people wish list the game, they get an email that gets sent out when the game launches. And then they go to the page and they look at it and it's like, ah, oh, something's gone wrong in that um, in that phase. So let's have a look. I mean, where do we go from here? Maybe we'll have a look at the page itself and get straight to it, right? But I do want to quickly touch on something before we do that, because they mentioned that everyone around them was telling them that their game was amazing, their game is going to be great, it's going to be very successful, and they kind of fell into this echo chamber, a bubble, if you will. And we're all experiencing it. I experience it. I'm working on a game, as you know, um, and you know, I have a degree of bias. And people who I show, my wife, my family or friends, there's going to be a bias there. Even, even when I tell them, be harsh, be cruel, there's always going to be a bias because the people around you who kind of uh, want to be around you, want to be friends with you and want to be on good terms with you, don't want to necessarily tell you the hard truth. So I think it's important to uh, really find a path or strategy to getting to that um, hard truth, even, even if it means paying a consultant who is impartial, has no um, affiliation with you, no friendship, where they can just look at it and say, look, your game sucks for X, Y, Z, um, you know, and maybe you can fix it through these other reasons. So anyway, let's get to this page and have a look. So the name is Dirge. So let's start with the um, synopsis or blurb, if you will. Dirge is an asymmetric up to four versus one survival horror where up to four paranormal investigators in the post-war era to hunt down and defeat dark entities hunting various tortured locations across the world. First of all, there's some, I feel like there's some um, grammatical issues there where up to four paranormal investigators in the post-war era to hunt down and yeah I mean look there's some issue here like this is the first thing people are going to read and if you have a typo there then it's going to reflect perhaps poorly on the entire game look if the screenshots are amazing and the trailer is amazing then maybe it's less of an issue because you know look um, the world is multicultural people have different languages and from time to time you get maybe games with bad English. Um, but in this case, it seems based on that post I read, um, they seem to have a good command of English. So it looks like they've basically um, got a typo in their main game description, which is probably not an ideal start. But anyway, hopefully the developer can see this and fix that ASAP. It's also important to understand that while I'm able to evaluate somebody else's work, maybe making some critiques or whatever, that does not in any way mean that I don't have issues with my own work. I absolutely do. I'm completely biased, you know, as we all are in regards to our own work. It's a lot easier for us to um, make evaluations and assessments of stuff that's external to us that we do not have a personal stake in. So I just want to make that clear before I continue on making evaluations of this page. Yeah, I mean... So, I mean, I get a fi I'm getting a fair idea of what this game is. Um, I feel like there are perhaps some issues with the um, 3D models and maybe like the lighting or something like that. This is uh, often a situation you find where when uh, indies or without a high budget attempt to make 3D games which are realistic with realistic looking characters where here they've gone for this character but 
the face, the expression, and kind of everything about it almost, just the lighting, sort of looks uh, like an asset pack thing. It may not be. For all I know, this is actually an original model, but something about it has the hallmarks of um, one of these sort of asset flip games. And of course, I'm not saying that's the case, but just to be impartial and look at it as my first reaction, there, there is something going on here that kind of has that feel that, eh. And that's why you have to be careful making uh, realistic 3D games unless you have the budget to see it through in all other aspects of the game. And it's why a lot of people go for, you know, low poly or abstract kind of ideas where they have less chance of tripping the uncanny valley switch. And that's what's happened here. Um, even though this is not moving, uh, there's a bit of uncanny valley here going on. So be mindful of that. You know, sometimes it's um, better to go with something that's not so realistic. You know, I not get it. People want to go for the realistic stuff because they want to compete. They want to make a double A game. They want to make a triple A game. But you got to be realistic, you know, because um, unless you can manage that level of standard across the whole project, it's it's um, it's difficult. It's difficult. All right, I'll stop it there. I mean, look, that looks quite good. I can see there's a lot of um, work has gone into it. Um, a lot of interesting interactions, the combat, you've got like the environments are, are very nice. But it is very dark, I suppose. Um, I probably wouldn't buy this game just based on my personal preferences. I'm not big into these dark. Everything is like dark and you're constantly walking around with flashlights and stuff. So, okay, we've got an, it's in early access. All right, so the game is incomplete. I mean, this is significant in a way because, um, yeah, people buying this are going, okay, well, do I want to buy it yet? So these 2,300 wishlisters, maybe they weren't expecting this to be going into an early access phase. And, you know, a lot of people are reluctant to buy early access games. It's not for everyone, you know. So I feel like if you're going to go into early access, maybe you need an even larger wishlist pool to give you um, uh, a more chance at a conversion because it seems that nobody from that wishlist pool had any interest in early access perhaps but um, yeah let's move on so oh aha uh -huh. so this is significant um, they've got a price point of 43 AUD to USD so 32 American dollars. That's, you know, price is subjective, of course, but this does seem like it's on the high end based on what I've seen. And importantly, because it's going into early access, right? Because so you're asking, I mean, this is a AAA, you're in AAA at this point with this price point. And there's probably, a, I mean, I can think off the top of my head, so many other games that I could buy for that money. This, what, this could be what it's all about at this point. It could be that the very one factor that has brought this all down on the developers is the price point. It could be as simple as that. I mean, it's easy to overanalyze this and think, oh, maybe it's this, maybe it's the graphics, maybe it's this and that. Like all those things, yes, but... The primary factor here, I suspect, based on my, um, you know, my opinion, is the price. They've simply gone with too high of a price at launch compared to what they are offering. Um, I mean, I'd love to know what you guys think about this, of course. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Is this a price point issue? Online PvP, LAN, co-op, LAN. I mean, does this even have a single player mode? So this game doesn't look like it has any single play mode, or at least that's how it seems based on the store listing. That's, hmm. So you need a few friends to play this game, up to four even, which means they all have to spend that amount of money to play this game. That's a bit of a hard sell. I think. Yeah, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. And I'm not sure if it's open, like if it's only co-op, uh, online co-op, LAN co-op. 
land PvP. So it's pretty much co-op. Maybe there's a lobby or something like that. Um, but even then, like there's nobody playing this game for you to be able to find a match. Be careful making games which are primarily multiplayer. You know, Fall Guys is, you know, they had a... You, you better believe they had millions of dollars behind that game. So, you know, Fall Guys is not this indie game project that a lot of people were trying to uh, make it in social media. They were kind of using that as a bit of a trick strategy where they were making people believe um, it was like um, just a small team or just like a couple of individuals. This was a big game uh, with massive um, servers with a lot of money backing it and God knows what kind of investors and stuff like that. So about this game... So this is very dark for me, this GIF. I have a, a blue light filter that's on my screen at all times, and I can barely see this. It's all just very dark. So we have some information about the game, but I'm just going to skip this because most people when making a choice to buy this kind of game. I'm not going to be reading this, so I'm just treating this as a potential buyer would. So we've got some multiplayer action being showcased, and um, we're going through a door which is, I don't know, maybe not the most interesting showcase of multiplayer. Just going through it like a doorway. And it almost looks like this guy's getting stuck on the door as he's going through, which could, um, you know, make people think that there might be some clunky aspects to the multiplayer, perhaps. Uh, so, you know, look, <laughs> so here's a, here's a um, good example of what I meant in terms of the, the price point. Phasmophobia, look, overwhelmingly positive. Look at those reviews. And you can get that game for $19 AUD, which is probably like $15 US. Dead by Daylight, 30 Australian dollars, which is about, you know, um, 22 US dollars. So I can pretty much buy both of these games for the price of this current game, Dirge. So let's have a look at the reviews. So I've got a positive... So I think we should look at the negatives. I think it's all, uh, you know, this guy got it for free. So I think the negative reviews are sometimes a good indicator of things. I don't know why any of these people gave this game a positive review. This game was the worst thing I've played in months and my day has been ruined. I mean, it's a bit harsh. <laughs> I think that's a bit, a bit dramatic, but yeah. And keep in mind, they've only played it for half an hour, so... And another one, only half an hour on record. I've only played this for under four hours so far, but it has a lot of potential for growth. And even with the current content, will keep my friends and I entertained for weeks, if not months. So one thing that did occur to me is that this game reminds me a lot of another game called Murdered Soul Suspects. You've got to be careful what games you might um, unknowingly associate yourself with. Like There might be a game on the market which... Everyone recognizes because it has some distinct features. In this game, it's like the detective and the ghosts and the apparitions and the hat. Uh, Murdered Soul Suspects was pretty much exactly that in terms of the, the look and feel. And it was a AAA uh, game, mind you. And to compare these side by side, the disparity between the 3D model quality starts to become a little bit more apparent. So very interesting, you know, and I think looking at the page with being given a clear idea of the various factors in play that are likely responsible for this um, outcome for the developer. You know, we have the high price point, we have the multiplayer only by the looks of it, um, we have the early access factor, and then of course we have um, the 3D models maybe looking a bit subpar in certain respects. So I think it's those different things collectively together which are responsible for um, this outcome for the developer and again i really feel for them you know they've put obviously put a lot of time into this regardless of how this thing sold regardless of the reviews there is a lot of work here you know they've put a lot of work and passion into this across four years like think about this you know we none of us are immune from this situation this could very well be my situation when it comes time to release my game. I hope not. I'll do everything I can for this not to be the case. And we should all do the same. But this is always on the table. You cannot run from this unknown factor where we everything is going well up until launch. And then we make one blunder, one mistake, which has catastrophic um, 
repercussions, you know, which in my, in my opinion, the main factor here is the price point. If they had perhaps released this at, um, you know, half of that with maybe a launch discount of, I don't know, 30%, then they may have had a successful game, a successful launch at least. You know, that could have been... Um, that could have been the case in like sort of like a parallel dimension scenario. So, you know, and it's, man, it's tough. It's tough. We need to break out of these delusion bubbles. Um, you know, I made a video about this, which, you know, was quite popular. It was, I called it the great game dev delusion because a lot of people come running to this industry, seeing some um, successful game examples, some case study, and thinking, hey, you know, if they did it, I can do it too. Like, sure, why not, right? And yeah, why not? But there's so many factors involved. And, you know, and often the factors that are truly responsible for some of those successful games are not really talked about and nobody really knows them. You know, like, what's the real reason um, Valheim was successful? Is it the art? Is it this? Is it that? Or was it some mystery X factor that nobody knows? Or, you know other indie games that have found, you know, this kind of viral um, success. And that's why you really have to do it for the passion. You have to be prepared to not make any money. You have to be prepared to spend years not making any money and still be okay with that. You have to come to those terms. You have to be comfortable with that. Don't let that stop you because we all have to face these failures. At some point in our life, nobody has just this kind of um, glory run from the start till end of life. You know, you're going to have setbacks some small, some big, but each one is a learning opportunity. It's There's something to find here, and I applaud these developers for coming to Reddit, putting their heart on their sleeve, and asking for help and saying, you know, what went wrong here? And I, I think that's um, that takes a lot of courage, you know, because they, I haven't gone through that post, but I can, um, I can just imagine there's some people going, oh, this is all that. And hopefully they've got some good um, constructive criticism there as well. It's a passion pursuit. It really is. So with all passion pursuits, we have to um, weigh up the pros and cons and make sure that we are actually happy in this pursuit and not just doing it with the hope of getting some kind of financial return because, um, you know, that may not be the case at all. So that's about it, guys. And I hope that this commentary has, um, you know, hopefully shed some light on what could be the causes of this situation for you guys, for myself and for the developer involved. And again, I wish them all the very best. I think they put in an absolutely valiant effort. There's been a lot of work that's gone into this. And regardless of the outcome, I think they've... Um, you know, they, they have a lot of respect from me and coming forward takes a lot of courage and, you know, it is what it is at this point. But hopefully it's been valuable in the sense that we can take some lessons back to our own projects and hopefully try to have a more favorable and fruitful outcome. Thank you for watching the video. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters who are supporting this channel and helping me to continue making these videos. Thanks very much, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thanks for watching guys. If you found this video useful and you'd like to see more, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. If you want to support this channel further, you can do so through the Patreon. Doing so will give you access to a bunch of different tutorials and resources that I've made. Alternatively, you can consider wishlisting my current game and development, Blood and Mead. I'd really appreciate that guys. Links for those will be down below. See you all and take care.